So priority action area one is about integrating mental health and psychosocial into every activity that the movement conducts. It's also about identifying basic psychosocial support um, as a, a mandatory um, training for all staff and volunteers across the movement. And it's also about challenging the stigma that exists around mental health. Um, the group is um, made, the, pr the working group for that priority action area is uh, made up of currently around 22 people. We have representation from around the globe, less actually around South Americas. So if you are joining today from that group, I will put my email in the chat, please get in touch. Or indeed, if you are so interested that you would like to join us, we meet every other month. We have uh, two meetings a day to try and cover all of the time zones. So very early and very late. And we meet on average for about an hour and a half um, with an agenda that goes out beforehand and then notes to follow. And we've been really focused on evolving some resources that will help provide people with an opportunity to connect to what we're really focused on. So you'll see that we defined the focal point. That was the first thing that we did. And that was in the survey, a definition of what focal points mean so that we could just all sign up to a similar function. And then the next thing we did was to identify what basic psychosocial support looks like. I'm hoping that you can see my screen now. Um, the reason that that's important is because the pyramid is fantastic, the model is, is marvelous, but what's, I guess, a more difficult thing is that um, lots of people find um, just the very, very basic nature um, difficult to um, uh, implement because if we're talking about all staff and volunteers having basic access to psychosocial support, we don't want to ask them to be doing days of training. So we were then having to think about what was it that we were going to do that was the absolute minimum. So what, what did we think that was the absolute minimum that all staff and volunteers could be asked to do? And this is what we came up with. I'm gonna try and not have a tiny screen here. Let me just do a, a, a decent size. So the definition that we came up with was that we thought that a very, very basic level of psychosocial support should include the components of self-care, basic listening, and communication skills. And we thought that in order for everyone to be able to access those, they should be delivered ideally through online. So remember, this is really basic because we thought every single member of the staff, member of staff and volunteer within the movement should be able to access these. So we also defined, the working group agreed, that the course length should be no more than 60 minutes. So ideally, the course would be between 45 or half an hour and 60 minutes, but no more than one hour, because this competes obviously with lots of other different components that people are being asked to train in. And then we put together a menu that you see before you that we have tried to gather from existing resources that have been used within the movement and also outside. And I won't go through all of these, but um, we're just looking for um, a uh, place, a platform for us to share these with you. And that is something that we're really focused on doing. But I can tell you that if you go to the PS Centre's website and look at the Research Network website, it is on there. And it's also on the uh, website for the European Network of Psychosocial Support, now called MHPSS Europe Network. And the reason for that is that in having evolved these resources, we then wanted to test them with the people who really know about these areas. And I'm really happy to say that both the Research Network for Mental Health and Psychosocial for the Movement and the um, MHPSS Network for Europe both found these to be really helpful. So I'm just going to scroll down just briefly so you can see these are mostly online resources that have been um, in play by different organisations, different national societies from around the movement between half an hour and an hour and uh, focusing on different populations in different contexts. So I know that one of the things that we were talking about in the last group was the importance of quality and quality control. And that is something I think that we do need to think about more. But right now we're focused on trying to get as many people accessing these as possible, because it picks up then about the importance of people understanding what psychosocial support is and being able to have an appreciation then ahead of integrating it. 
Okay, I'm now going to pass to my co-chair, also named Sarah. So in addition to um, uh, the, the definition of basic psychosocial support and the, the focal point definition that we came up with for the survey, we were also asked um, to look at uh, assessment, um, preparedness plans um, and tools um, to help monitor activities. And this is, we inherited if I can use that term, um, this in our uh, terms of reference for the group, and it's actually documented in the roadmap document that was released in, in 2020 after the international conference. So this is a big, the second big piece of work that we've been focusing on um, this year with the working group members. And um, what we uh, did in this particular spreadsheet was to to have some inclusion exclusion criteria. So we said that it needs to have whatever tool, whether it's an assessment tool or a monitoring tool or an evaluation tool, it needs to have 10 questions or less, or 10 items or less, or factors. Um, and this was just, uh, we had a lot of discussion within the group over what was actually feasible and possible for um, National Society volunteers and staff members, um, and also ICSC and IFRC staff members to fill in. Um, and we came up with 10 items or less. And the other crucial thing is similar to what Sarah said with the first spreadsheet, when we're talking about basic psychosocial support, we are literally going for minimal. So lowest common denominator, which means that these tools should be able to be used by any volunteer or staff member. It doesn't necessarily require you to have um, additional uh, trainings in, in basic PSS or even in MHPSS to be able to use them in depth. So, for example, colleagues in, in um, monitoring evaluation teams or colleagues in health programs or shelter programs, for example, could also use these tools as well. So the, f um, the, the ones that you can see currently on the page were also collated from different national societies that were working with these tools already or currently. Um, so there's a number from Canadian Red Cross and Ethiopian Red Cross that have incorporated violence prevention um, and protection issues and uh, psychosocial support. They have a rapid assessment tool that's also in the Psychosocial Centre Toolkit. Um, we also have tools from other agencies, um, particularly from Save the Children, for example, have been included um, for tools focusing on, on children. Um, and then we also have tools that were not just focusing on programming or service provision, but also some tools that were looking at staff and volunteer care. So there are examples in this sheet, particularly from Belgium Red Cross Flanders, where they actually had specific questions that were sent out to their staff and volunteers during the pandemic to check their well-being. Um, and then based upon these real-time results that were coming in, I think they did it weekly, they were able to then track the well-being of volunteers. Um, so they're also included there. Um, in addition to, to bigger tools, for example, like the World Health Organization one, the WHODAS5, as it's called. And in column G, you can also see um, the language versions that they're written in. So some are in multiple languages, 30, for example, for the WHO tool and others are uh, just in the languages that have been developed um, by that respective national society or taken and translated and used in other contexts. Um, the other thing is this, on both sheets actually a work in progress. So in all of our meetings, we always just go through the sheets quickly and say, are there any updates? Is anybody aware of anything new that might be coming out or new translations, for example, that national societies might have taken on? And what's sitting on my to-do list is I need to incorporate the tools from the IASC, the Interagency Common Monitoring and Evaluation Framework, because they've just updated theirs with about 45 new tools, some of which will be relevant for the Red Cross Red Crescent movement. They're not yet incorporated um, in this document. Um, and then also what is missing, and this is also a plea for, for colleagues from ICSC that might be listening and online, would be if there's any tools of, of relevance or of use that ICSC are using, particularly for monitoring and evaluation. Um, we haven't been able to capture those yet in the document and we would welcome you to send them if you have ones that fit that criteria um, at the top as well. <coughs> 